There are so many Rose Bowl rituals, including a long tradition of tremendous matchups. And you can add this one to the list. Playing in their third straight Rose Bowl on the Wisconsin Badgers. Running back Monte Ball, college football's all-time touchdown king. Across the line, Stanford, putting a premium on defense, playing with pride that starts with its head coach, David Shaw. Both teams poised to win, but whatever the outcome, they will earn the right to remember forever that they played in the granddaddy of them all. You are looking live at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, site of a holiday tradition that has brightened the new year for over a century. And on a gorgeous, sunny Southern California afternoon, we welcome you to the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. A matchup no one saw coming in August or even October. Stanford, without quarterback Andrew Luck, upset USC and then Oregon to win the Pac-12. Wisconsin, without quarterback Russell Wilson, lost five games, three in overtime, until they rallied to hang a 70 on Nebraska in the Big Ten Championship game. Stanford is playing in its third straight BCS Bowl, but its first Rose Bowl in over a decade. Wisconsin simply calls Pasadena Madison West. This is the Badgers' third straight trip to the Rose Bowl, but they haven't won here since 2000. And between them, these two great schools have played in 22 Rose Bowls. Welcome, everybody, with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brent Lopsir. A very happy New Year to everybody. And Gene Kirk, when you go back to Stanford, the last time we saw them in Eugene, Oregon, yeah. big underdog, and they come away with one of the upsets of the year. Well, it's been a remarkable story, if you really think about it. The last four years for this program, the last three years, they've been in BCS Bowl games, the Orange, the Fiesta, and now today, and the granddaddy of them all. David Shaw doing an exceptional job in his second year. It really starts up front with their ability to run the football against this Wisconsin team. Stephon Taylor is a physical back, one of the best backs in the country. I really think that they're going to have to have the combination of looking at Ho Kevin Hogan in the backfield, throwing the football, and also Taylor's ability to run the ball. Well, you know, it's such an interesting build-up to Wisconsin's appearance here. It's all about the coach. Brett Bielma won the Big Ten and then left to take the Arkansas head coaching job. And back in the saddle after a nine-year absence, Barry Alvarez. And, uh, Kirby, what does he mean to the Wisconsin team here today? Well, you lose a great coach and a coach you believe in in Brett Bielema. And, and now you have a coach who they're very fortunate to have as athletic director comes down after being asked by Mike Taylor and the team to come down and coach, who has great experience, not just getting the three Rose Bowls, but you see at the bottom he's 3-0. and oh. And what I think he brings more than anything is a belief, a swagger. I've been here, guys. Follow me. I know what it takes. And he's really built a lot of camaraderie in his last 30 days or so where well, this team now is excited and, and I think the continuity within the coaching staff both coordinators have been coaching this team getting them ready and I think they believe that they can win it so when Barry was last seen at a Rose Bowl he came here with a guy named Ron <laughs> Dane now he's got Monte Ball who's pretty good pretty pretty good uh, running back to inherit to get ready for this one game I mean Monte Ball is sensational uh, we've seen him the last few years his vision is remarkable he does a lot of those jump cuts you'll see him challenge the Stanford defense on the backside the vision here not to give up on the play but to be able to go back into the middle and then to be able to have the burst and the acceleration to be able to take a, maybe a 15 yard gain and to be able to take it all the way to the house. But the thing I love about him is how tough he is as a runner. He will lower his shoulder and run right through both linebackers and safeties who come up into the line of scrimmage and try to challenge it. And if I'm Stanford, I've got to take Monte Ball out, and I've got to try to make, whether it's Kirk Phillips back there at quarterback or eventually Joel Stave, make Wisconsin throw to beat me. And if you can do that, you've got a chance to win this game. And, of course, the two defenses become a big issue. Can they stop either of these great running attacks? Exactly. I mean, Stanford's defense has been very physical the entire year. I think most people that have not seen them nationally that will see them for the first time today will be shocked to see how physical they are in the front seven, how athletic as a group overall they are. And Wisconsin, it's kind of Wisconsin. They're going to be determined to be able to slow down Stephon Taylor. They've got to get pressure the best they can on Kevin Hogan. Stanford already out on the field. Head coach David Shaw, second year as head coach, replaced Jim Harbaugh when he went to the San Francisco 49ers.
Coach Stanford hasn't won a Rose Bowl game since 1972. What key piece of advice have you given this team about really taking advantage of today's opportunity? Well, you know, today is about us playing together, playing for each other, doing whatever it takes to win the football game. Coach, enjoy it. Thank now you. let's go over to Tom. And Brent. Look down at our grand scene here. One of America's great stadium spectacles. People still firing in. Stanford will handle the ball first. There's a series history. They first met back in 1959. The Badgers have never lost to the Cardinal. Met here in the 2000 Rose Bowl, won by Barry Alvarez and his great running back Ron Dane, who rushed for 200 yards that day. Kelsey Young for Stanford out to the 20. Seems only appropriate that we bring in Andrew Luck to introduce the Stanford quarterback today. Hi, this is Andrew Luck, class of 2012. Let's meet Stanford's starting quarterback for this year's Rose Bowl, Kevin Hogan, a redshirt freshman from McLean, Virginia. Good luck, Kevin, and go Stanford. I imagine that uh, probably that Andrew will be keeping close eye on the Cardinal today as he gets ready to take the Colts into Baltimore next weekend in the NFL playoffs. This is a, a bowl game that Andrew Luck did not lead the Cardinal to. As Herbie told you, the Fiesta Bowl last year. Running play on first down with Stephon Taylor, number 33. He's a senior from Mansfield High School, Texas. And uh, Herbie here is the young man who took over in the middle of the season. He started his first road game in that upset of Oregon. You can see his four starts. He's 4 0, beat four ranked teams. And speaking of Andrew Luck, Andrew Luck sending messages to Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator, and also David Shaw after he saw Kevin Hogan step in and say, That's starting to look more and more like our offense from a year ago because of the mobility and the athletic ability that he has at that position. Hewitt motioned out, and they come back with Taylor. And he is stopped by the middle of that Wisconsin defensive line. Bo Allen, the first to hit him, are impact players for the Cardinal. Yeah, Stephon Taylor is going to have to carry the load offensively when it comes to running the football. Zach Ertz still look to try to isolate, especially on third downs and one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And then Shane Scove and Chase Thomas will lead a very physical and active linebacking crew for the Stanford Cardinal defense. Passing situation here. Cody Whitfield, a freshman, one of the receivers on the field for the Cardinal. Montgomery's your motion man. In trouble. Good on the move. Trying to pick up the first down. He steps out of bounds with that fine mobility of his, Irving. And this is what we've talked about in the last four games in this offense, what he brings to the table. This is the difference. They had him. They had a sack at the very least, make him throw the football away. This is what he's going to challenge with Wisconsin all day. Ability to keep the play alive. His vision downfield, trying to think about throwing the ball downfield. But instead of throwing it, he has the quickness and speed and awareness to be able to find that first down marker to keep this drive alive. Cardinal using receivers to shuttle in the play. Patterson brought this one in backfield is empty offensive line holds up and on first down they come to the great tight end Zach Ertz Richard Jr. from Alamo California and folks one of the best that we have seen the last few years. It's interesting. They go with an empty package. The reason is they want to try to isolate just like that. Try to get Zach Ertz matched up against Mike Taylor and Chris Borland one-on-one. -on -one. That'll be a big theme in this game when they want to throw the football, trying to find ways to get the linebackers from Wisconsin who are very physical against the run, get them out in space and make them defend the pass. Very good fullback in Ryan Hewitt. He stays right ahead of Taylor. Taylor steps outside with that vision, battles to midfield and across it. Another first down for the Cardinal, southward with the stop. Really good job of blocking by the right side of the offensive line. Also, Devon Cahoost, 
gets involved the juice rather at the uh, wide receiver you'll see him come in and get involved off to the outside as well this offensive line right now these first 15 plays that Pep Hamilton is scripting they're adjusting on the fly trying to see what Wisconsin's doing the little wrinkles are trying to add they have to adjust on the fly Wilkerson ran the Wildcat it's a reverse pass Turl going right down the field and it's caught Patterson reaches up at the 15 yard line an outstanding athlete out of McDonough Georgia and what a catch 34 yards Brett this was so slow in developing that Wisconsin was there the entire time Shelton Johnson saw it the safeties felt it I don't think Patterson fooled anybody he just made an outstanding catch in high pointing the football and going up and being able to somehow secure that what concentration Wisconsin was there is just a better play by Patterson now their first play in the red zone and it's Stephon Taylor off fake. They come back the other side off a reverse action for the touchdown with Kelsey Young. He is a converted running back to wide receiver, and he is lethal carrying the football. Kelsey Young scores the game's first touchdown. If you're a Stanford Cardinal fan, it's exactly the way you want to see this game started. What an outstanding drive. Seven plays, five runs, and a couple passes, and they put a touchdown up on the board. Jordan Williamson will beat Oregon with a field goal. And he makes this Stanford seven, Wisconsin nothing. After sending Taylor off to the right, Countering back here with Young. He's a sophomore from Norco, California. We welcome you back to the Rose Bowl. That's why Stanford, Herbie, took the offensive side of the ball yeah. after winning the coin flip. What? Kenzel Doe and James White. Back deep. This is Doe, and he's going to come out from two yards deep. Not a good decision. Down at the 10 yard line. Well, we've heard from Andrew Luck, so it's only fair that we hear from the other side. I'm Russell Wilson, starting quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks. The Badgers' starting quarterback for this year's Rose Bowl is Kirk Phillips, senior quarterback from Kingsport, Tennessee. Good luck out there, Kirk, and on Wisconsin. Well, Russell Wilson and the Badgers beaten in the highest scoring Rose Bowl game ever a year ago by Oregon and Russell too is going to the NFL playoffs he'll be in Washington to play the Redskins and RG3 next week they want to throw off an end around incomplete and it'll be second down I believe that was Melvin Gordon it was off that jet action coming around uh, hoping that he could catch him by surprise with the left hand. Well, the jet sweep was so effective in Indianapolis in the Big Ten Championship. They were trying to hope by showing it on the first play, Stanford would be coming up to be able to stop it, and they were going to try a little trick play to throw the football on the very first Offense. play of the game. Ball be placed in the spot of the infraction. Loss of down, second down. There was no receiver in the area. Got him, got him an Whoa. intentional grounding on the very only. first play. Whoa, whoa. Not only was it a little bit ugly uh, I thought he was under duress myself on that play I so the ball is spotted inside the five yard line Monte ball is the eye back in the end zone and he's going to try to come out he's got daylight on the left side 20 
to the 27. Beautiful first run by Ball, Herbie. Oh, and a huge play for Wisconsin, considering the way this game has started. And a good job of cutting this back to his left. A play is well designed, outstanding. I mean, outstanding execution by that Wisconsin offensive line. You can tell when Monte Ball runs, the backside blocks are just as important as the play side blocks. Good job of coming to the backside there, and good vision again by Ball. So after the costly penalty, Ball picks up a first down. And they come right back with it. And he picked up about a yard on that. Kurt Phillips is one of those youngsters that uh, you feel so happy, Herbie, that he, yep. that he got a chance. He's gone through three major knee operations. Go all the way back to the spring, uh, spring of 2010. He had his first ACL. He had another one in November of 2010. Had an infection, a third reconstruction. He's battled back. He ends up being the third quarterback that they've used this year, and he's 2-2 two and two in the last four games, and the two losses were in overtime to Ohio State and Penn State. So Gordon... They split out to the left side, and here he comes with that jet sweep, and they fake, and the quarterback, Phillips, is taken down. Stanford is going to do everything that they can to try to stop Monte Ball, and I think they're very confident that if they can get Phillips and this Wisconsin offense into these kind of situations, third down and nine, that they've got a shot to be able to be effective defensively. Remember, they're number one in the nation with 56 sacks on the year. And you get them down to third and long, they're going to bring a lot of pressure on Phillips here. Let's see how he handles it here for this first chance. Doe and Frederick are two wide receivers off to the right. Aberderis, their best possession receiver, is to the left in this formation. Phillips looks in that direction, out of bounds, and he thought Aberderis was going to turn it out upfield. Instead, he was going down the field. Well, this is not the strength to this offense in third down. And Alex Carter, a freshman, realizes in third nine, that's great coverage. I mean, that's just outstanding. Knowing the down and distance, body, using his body and using the sideline side as another defender. There was nowhere to go that time for Phillips. Nobody was open. So Drew Meyer is back, and Terrell waits for the punt. Meyer, the punter, Richard, freshman from Hartland, Wisconsin. Sort of a low line drive. And Terrell will just let it row dead at the 21 yard line. With the offense back on the field, Hewitt is off to his left. Taylor. Play action. Hogan rolls off to the right, throws downfield to Drew Terrell. The last time Stanford had the football, they went right down the field, and a big part of it was his trick. Nice throw here by Terrell, but really an exceptional catch by Patterson. And then they catch him off guard the very next play, the reverse to Kelsey Young. Wisconsin's defense not anticipating it. You can see the big center had an easy way there against the only man left there, the corner from Wisconsin. 19 more yards for the Stanford offense. And they use the Wildcat direct snap to Taylor. And Taylor busts for another nine yards on this play. So offense, Herbie, is having its way against his defense. They are really moving down the field on him. Yeah, and I think right now what we're seeing is a Wisconsin defense that is prepped for three or four weeks. They knew what was coming, but it's one thing to try to simulate this power style in, in, in practice. But all of a sudden, these linemen start moving and executing in a way that you're not used to seeing. It takes some time to be able to adjust. Even this style of offense, you know, you typically say that against these up-tempo spread teams, but it's even more so against a physical team that's going to try to pound you like Stanford. Toilolo and Ertz, two tight ends are in this formation. And they will run Taylor on a nice cutback as he comes across midfield to the 46 yard line of Mike Taylor with the stop and, and what happens when they run the power and they, they have their balance is it eventually sets up their play action game because the, the linebackers and they have Wisconsin has two good ones in Mike Taylor and, and Chris Borland 
they're going to start to really get dialed in on their keys, their run keys. We got to fit better against the run. We got to stop the run. And that's when Pep Hamilton, either this play or the next play, do not be surprised to see some kind of play action if those safeties and linebackers are cheating. Play action. Hit on the release. Got a man open. Ertz grabs it inside the five yard line. Oh, baby, what a catch. We just talked about these safeties and linebackers start to cheat up against the running game because they're getting eight, nine yards of carry. You got to look out for Zach Ertz, and that's exactly what happened here. He gets hammered as he throws it by Hamer, but this is the guy that they've got to get the ball to downfield. Zach Ertz, the top tight end in the country, in my mind, 6'6", 252 pounds, and how about the throw by Kevin Hogan? Despite being ready to get hit, he puts the ball where Ertz can make a play on it. Just a great drive here again by this Stanford offense. Hewitt lined up in front of Taylor. Here comes Taylor behind him, battling. Touchdown, Stanford. Two possessions, two touchdowns. Badgers in trouble early. Williamson makes it a 14 nothing lead so they drive 80 yards Herbie and now 79 and it was all set up again a big play here play action on first and 10 they get the ball downfield to Zach Ertz and the very next play to their go to man Stephon Taylor into the end zone and right now the Stanford Cardinal could not do anything wrong they're up 14 here early. Ah, yes, the tree made it. Herbie, this is the first Rose Bowl game that I've ever had the pleasure of doing, where the band is on double secret probation. <laughs> but I must say, they came out and they behaved themselves, and they played a great national anthem. Yes, they did. Quite a contrast from the band from Wisconsin. <laughs> a little bit of a different feel. James White and Kenzel Doe now are back deep for the Badgers. You definitely have to rally around the boss now. He'll take a knee this time. Well, the Badgers need to get the first score back that they can, trailing by two scores here, early going. And they'll bring the Duck Walker Award winner again, Monte Ball. And only got about three yards as we check in with Monte and some of these other impact players here, Harvey. Well, obviously, Monte Ball, we've talked quite a bit about his importance to the offense. Jared Aberderis, if there is a go-to man on the perimeter and the guy that's got to make plays in the perimeter, it's Aberderis, number four. And Chris Portland and Mike Taylor, we've already seen them, seen them challenged trying to look, stop this powerful running game and then the awareness to be able to be able to stop the play-action pass. That also will be a challenge for them throughout the rest of this game. Here comes Ball. Bust behind the middle, right? Back at Travis Frederick, the great center, and Morrow makes the play defensively for Stanford. And Monte Ball has, has just been phenomenal these last few years. And really, it started in the, the back half of the 2010 season. It had a huge year in 2011. Of course, this year, just remarkable. In fact, he leads uh, all backs and all players in college football with a career mark and touchdown says it all. James White now into the backfield for the Badgers trying to convert on this third down. White breaks away comes to the left side of me check that Monte Ball was still in there by mistake. I thought that White had checked in from the sideline and he had not Monte Ball though picked up a good first down cost again the 54 picks up the block Tarpley the linebacker was closing on third down and short anticipating ball on the run but great awareness as the as the guard Costigan was coming around he, he had to deal with Tarpley in his face right now he kicked him out just in time to allow ball to get underneath that for the first down now white has checked back in he is to Phillips right Phillips going to throw on first down nice. incomplete and there's a penalty flag that was thrown on the linebacker over there Chase Thomas had coverage 
Personal foul. Defense. Hands to the face. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. That's the leader of this defense, Chase Thomas. He's been playing for four years. This will give you a really good look at it right here. Yeah, maybe the right hand got up as he was trying to push Doe away. And that is a big break for Wisconsin as they now move into Stanford territory for the first time. And ball has returned as the Badger running back right now. Best looking. Drive certainly by the Badgers. Ball, daylight, left side, busts the tackle, keeps on going across the 30 yard line. Monte Ball, Jordan Richards in on that stop, the safety for Stanford. You and I love the fullbacks and JJ Watts, younger brother. Look at this block right there. Great block on Lancaster, 35. There's Derek Watt, who's a freshman at 6'2, 227 pounds, leading the way there for Ball. And Herbie, if he becomes as good a player as his brother, he's got second down and very short. And this is White. White for another Badger first down. It'll be first down and goal. Now Monte Ball trots back onto the field. He's the touchdown machine. He, he runs with such great hunger and desire down in there. But isn't it nice for Wisconsin to have James White and Melvin Gordon in that backfield to be able to keep these backs fresh, which will be very, very important if they want to stay in this game. All three have a pivotal role in competing against this Stanford defense. Derek Watt returns as the the fullback as we come to the end of the first quarter Stanford dominating leads at 14 nothing but Wisconsin is threatening when you come back for the start of the second quarter of the 99 Rose Bowl game a couple of tight ends and a fullback to help with the blocking and here comes 28 Monty ball touchdown that was easy and there's a penalty flag thrown back on the 10 yard line coming back first down and Rick Wagner the left tackle who was on the outside this play went right up the middle he's off to the left he locks on with his man look at the far left how he locks on to his man grabs him and then brings him down that's what they saw it's a good call we quick call teach. we had two officials make that call quick we have to teach this referee not to talk into the teeth of a crowd no one can hear exactly who he's pointing out was guilty of holding now it's backed up here comes Ball again, and he's back to about the 13-yard line. We talked about how impressive it was to see the boss, Barry Alvarez, and Matt Canada, who's the offensive coordinator, still calling the plays. Barry telling us this morning that he's going to allow Matt Canada to call the plays, but there's Matt certain downs, certain plays. He's going to kind of help guide him uh, and, and have... Uh, the overall say on what the play will be, but right now Matt Canada in charge of calling these plays to try to get him in the end zone. Second down and goal for the 14. They keep it in Ball's hands. The Badgers have not completed a pass. And that was an obvious passing situation. And Herbie, as you pointed out, it's very difficult to stay on the ground in that situation. And when you run on first and second down, if you're going to take a shot with a pass, typically you, you may want to do it on first or second down down here. The penalty just set them back. It killed them. Uh, Wagner didn't have to hold there. That, that's going to be a touchdown without that hold. But now you try to throw, get your first completion on third down. It's going to be tough. Aberderis is definitely their go-to man here who's in the slot to the left. Patterson, the tight end, is out also. Reaches for Jacob Pedersen. Touchdown, Wisconsin. Everybody thinking maybe Aberderis, but Jacob Pedersen's had a pretty good career himself. 
What an effort Brent to extend. They might take a peek to see if his knee was down. Pretty good effort to extend to the end zone, but did his knee touch before he broke the plane? It appears so in that picture. It's like he's down maybe on the six inch line. After further review, it was determined that the runner's knee was down prior to going in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the half yard line on the left hash. And Wisconsin getting their jumbo package ready. But White is trotting onto the field. All yep. right. Now James White, and that gives them the option of running a Wildcat here on fourth down. Sure. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to line up number 20, offset the fullback. Extra tackle. Straight ahead, didn't battling for it. I don't think he got it. I don't think he got the touchdown. I think big Ben Gardner got to him first. The young man from Wisconsin. Very, very predictable. Gardner shoots the gap, uses his quickness against the size of Wisconsin. Wisconsin came in with their heavy package. They brought in the jumbo look, all the big linemen. And again, speed wins the battle in the trenches. He gets lower and he penetrates that big offensive line and keeps White short of the end zone. So Stanford is backed up in the shadow of its own goal at the half yard line. Hogan under center standing in the end zone. Hewitt the fullback is stopped. I do not believe that's a safety. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. Southward was pushing him back and they'll spot it outside of the end zone and it'll be second down here pretty good collision there with southward coming up and remember stanford's had the football only twice seven plays 80 yards touchdown five plays 79 yards touchdown 13 yards of play it's a little bit of a different story for david shaw backed up inside his own one yard line badger defense attempting to attack here Battling to get out, twisting to the six-yard line on second down, and a little daylight with Stephon Taylor. That was a good, tough run. Third down and eight. Taylor, stop, and the Badgers have forced a punt. Big Chris, well, I shouldn't say not so big, but Chris Borland is a tackling machine. Or he is. And you're right about not saying he's he's real big, but he is a fierce competitor. At 5'11", 242 pounds, he's right in the middle of this defense, and he's coming downhill in a hurry. He and Mike Taylor have got to be active, making a lot of tackles today against uh, Stephon Taylor. Let's see if the Badgers come after this one. The putter is standing near the back of the end zone. He gets it out. Abraderis feels it and is tackled immediately at midfield. The safety made a great play on that for Stanford. And that was Amana. Amana makes the stop. And we'll be right back to the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Here at the Rose Bowl, Stanford leads Wisconsin by two touchdowns, 14-0. And as expected, Joel Stavi, Richard freshman from Greenfield, Wisconsin, number two, is checked in as the Badger quarterback. James White is his running back. Gordon on the jet sweep, gets a handoff, trying to get the edge, looking for daylight, and he picks up a first down at the 34-yard line. Yeah. Carrington may have saved a touchdown early. Sorry, Brent. Here's the view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam, and this is a play that a lot of people remember in Indianapolis against the Nebraska defense, the jet sweep, and such great speed and such a great compliment to Monte Ball running into the interior. You get Gordon out to the outside. It really does a good job of getting this defense on the outside and challenging them that vertical speed and how quickly Gordon can hit it. Everett Terrace and Doe are over on the left. Play action now. Stabby's going to go deep end zone. Everett Terrace is open. And he couldn't hang on. 
incomplete in the end zone. But I think Stavi just showed you why the coaches wanted him on the field. He's got the bigger arm, but it's a double move here by Aberderis. He's known for this. A beautiful move by Terrence Brown. He gets by him. And I'll tell you what, the ball is thrown well enough to give him a shot here and be able to make this play. It's actually Barry Browning there in coverage. Really well thrown ball. Shocking that Aberderis unable to hold on to the ball. Even more shocking, Kurt Phillips has returned to the game. <laughs> that was a pretty good throw. Suck it down and 10, and <laughs> Phillips is back as the quarterback with White as the running back. Jet sweep again. It's going to be Gordon this time, Cardinal already. The defenders over on the right side did not give ground and Lancaster made the stop for Stanford. What's great about the jet sweep for this offense is whether it hits a big one or not, it makes this defense have to play Wisconsin's running game honestly. And what you can do if you have it a few times you get to the outside, it can eventually get back to Monte Ball and James White between the tackles. So you bounce it to the outside, and then you keep him honest by going back to the inside. A little bit of a chess match between Matt Canada and what Derek Mason's doing on the other side. Phillips. Middle. Aberderis has got it. A deflection, I believe, that he caught. And that'll be a first down across the 15-yard line. Henry, Henry Anderson, 91, moves into the middle, coming all the way from the outside. That ball, I don't even think he got his hand on it, Brent. I either went off his shoulder pad or his side of his helmet. The ball went right up into the air. And Aberderis shows you he's a sure-handed receiver that time. Great concentration to be able to hold on to this. But, yeah, that went off the face mask of, of, of Henderson. And the ball that time bounces in favor of Wisconsin. Monte Ball checks back in. He is behind one. Monte steps to the right, dashes, reaches, touchdown. And I think this one will stick. A beautiful jump cut bounces it to the outside. This guy just has a nose for the end zone reaches and extends and gets the six points for the Badgers. The all time career touchdown leader in college football. And the new field goal kicker Jack Russell will attempt this extra point here for the Badgers. 14-7 with nine minutes remaining here in the first half. The defense set this up, Herbie, by forcing that punt. They had great field position. And this time, look who Barry did leave on. Number 28. Down seven, back in it. Vanessa Manjarez, the Rose Queen, the Royal Court. They rode in the Macy's float, presenting the Royal Court in this morning's 124th Rose Parade. The parade older than this great game. And now... Kyle French will handle the kickoffs for the Badgers, and you can see why. Drilling it back and uh, coming out is Kelsey Young. And Young to the 23 yard line. Fine return by Kelsey, who scored one of the touchdowns. Side Cardinal football now. Hogan hands back off, and this is Wilkerson, and Wilkerson. Bus out to the 42-yard line. Herbie, uh, he was not healthy that night in Oregon, but when he is, he's a great backup to Taylor. Well, he looks like a bull running through here. <laughs> it's a different look and a different feel. But how, how about how that play just opened up? The execution again by this offensive line. Let me recommend to any offensive line coaches that are out there, you, you want, might want to go and look at the Stanford film, not just from today, but the entire season and use it as a clinic or maybe come visit Mike, Mike Bloomgren and his Stanford offensive line. One of the best in the country. They're going to go to the Wildcat now with Wilkerson. Direct snap. A little bit of a counter step to the right. 
and he steps out at midfield on first down. Cromarty gets him out. I just in this era of the spread, I, it, it's so refreshing. You and I've called a lot of Stanford games over the years. It's so refreshing to watch guys like this up front who kind of do it the old-fashioned way. And it's not just the size of these guys. They're very, very athletic. They get to the second level. They execute very well. Just a great group across the board. And they've recruited some freshmen that you're going to yes. be hearing from in the next few years in there, too. Now Hogan back in from the gun. A wobble caught by Montgomery. And Montgomery is to the 35-yard line. That's his first catch. The first and down. And first and 10. And Cardinal moving again. And another job. Another good job here by Stanford. Trying to get these linebackers out in space. You get a matchup with Ty Montgomery as a receiver who's healthy now after the long layoff getting ready for this bowl game up against Mike Taylor and how about the way you see this quarterback Kevin Hogan sitting back in the pocket not just an athletic guy he can run the pro stuff too sits in the pocket with time to throw finds that matchup and puts it right on the money Taylor back in but they spread him out to the left and empty the backfield Hogan incomplete now out of bounds here on the far side Montgomery was waiting but there was pressure coming that time from Mike Taylor, one of the fine linebackers. When they spread out Wisconsin's defense, the, the mismatch to me is going to be with the, the tight ends. Toilolo, number 11, is 6'8", and Zach Ertz is 6'6". And you've got safeties and linebackers who are anywhere from 5'11 to 6'2", trying to match up with them out in space. That's a very difficult thing for this defense to try to match up with Stanford will continue to go back to that look quite a bit that was Hogan's first miss after four completions and he comes right back to the right hand side that time short of the 30 yard line was Ty Montgomery the sophomore from Dallas Texas St. Mark's High School it's been so impressed this year with Kevin Hogan he started the year as the third guy I mean who wants to replace Andrew Luck and Hogan was being a freshman still learning the offense. They kind of had a, a different wrinkle as kind of a zone read look for him early. And then eventually Josh Nunes lost a couple games and late in the year they gave him a chance to go out there and take over And these last four games has just been sensational as the leader of this offense. Try to throw for it. Too high and incomplete. He had Ertz open, but they couldn't hook up. Yeah, they, they always want to try to find a way to get Ertz to football. They have Tololo and Ertz matched up together, trying to just affect the communication between the two defensive backs who are matched up out there. Again, Ertz at 6'6", Tololo at 6'8". That ball is thrown lower there by Hogan. It's a first down for the Cardinal. Jordan Williamson will attempt this. 47 yard field goal. There's the young man who missed a couple of huge field goals against Oklahoma State and came back and beat Oregon in Eugene this year. Coach stuck right with him and he curls this 47 yarder in. 17 7 now. Stanford leads Wisconsin. So the Badgers here in the Rose Bowl set to receive this kickoff. For me, that was good holding that. That drive down, potential touchdown, settling for it three. It was, especially after the first two drives, two touchdowns for Stanford. Then they pin them back inside their own one-yard line. They get three and out to get the ball back to their own offense. And, and then that stopped to, to force the field goal. That, that's good adjustments there by this, uh, this defense from Wisconsin. Doe and Wider back deep. This will be Doe coming out. He's down at the 15-yard line. Wisconsin has all three timeouts and 223 here to go. Ball again. Boy, it is tough for the first man to bring him down as he makes his way to the 20-yard line. I found it hard to believe when Ball decided to come back to school that the NFL had said he projected no better than a third-round draft choice. When you watch him, he gets tough inside yards, and to me, that's the mark of somebody who can play in the National Football League. Well, he's a guy that can stay on the field. First, second, and third down. He's good in pass protection. He can catch the football, obviously can run to the outside and run to the inside. He is very physical runner. 
will surprise you with his size and dimensions. Look at him. Find his daylight off his lead blocker and muscle ahead for a first down out to the 29-yard line. Another thing about the young man, he's got a great attitude. Mom and dad are around. You know, he's had great upbringing. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong picking him. No, 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 no. And, and, and in fact, he was known early in his career, more known for his power than his quickness. He's kind of grown in to being more of a big play back. Now Phillips. See if he can loosen it up. Abraderis out of bounds at the 40, and that's a first down throw. And a good job of concentrating again by Jared Abraderis. Chase Thomas, who's a great pass rusher, this time sits back in coverage. I think he may have surprised this time Phillips. He actually gets a hand on the football, and Abraderis focuses there and is able to hold on and catch the football for the first down. Starting to think about maybe a field goal here. It's still all three timeouts, and remember, they get the ball to start the second half. This is a big drive for Wisconsin. Phillips will take off. Down the sideline, breaks free. Across the 25-yard line and out of bounds at the 22 with Richards making the stop. And that's, that's a 38-yard run. And I love that he didn't give up on this play. I watched Jared Aberderis pick up a block here. Looks like he's going to run out of bounds. Look at that seal block. He actually picks up two defenders, Alex Carter and Ed Reynolds with that block. He stays in bounds. A great run there by Phillips. 115 to go. And White stopped on first down. Barry calls a timeout right away. He's got a second down and 10. Got a minute six to work with here. Coming in underneath with a nice pass. And White is out of bounds. At about the 15, coming up on the Buick halftime report, Chris Lee and Desmond break down the first half, and we will hear from both marching bands. Again, two timeouts left. About a minute, what is a minute or one here to go in the first half. Cannot emphasize it enough. Stanford won the toss, elected to receive the ball, went right down and scored, meaning Wisconsin and Barry Alvarez will get the ball in the second half. Barry would dearly love to have a touchdown and not put it on the foot of his kicker right now. That's been a little bit of an issue, as Herbie mentioned, in the field goal department. So the Badgers will see if they can strike to the end zone. Phillips, good time, and got it off between two defenders to the seven-yard line. Man, what a throw that was to Sam Arneson, a sophomore from Merrill, Wisconsin. Remember they say never throw late over the middle? How in the world did A.J. Tarpley not intercept that football? Went right through his hands. How about the focus Look. by the sophomore Sam Arneson to somehow catch that football? Wow. And here comes Monte. Steps out left, cuts back to daylight to the five-yard line. You know, we've talked about Phillips when he came back in the game. Little Rascals completed six in a row. One off the face mask, but nice bounce. <laughs> and they come quickly now. Monte behind the center. And he is up to about the four-yard line. 28 seconds, third down and goal. We're going to call the timeout here. Barry Alvarez, you know, they're... they're Barry Alvarez is an outstanding coach and still is an outstanding coach. He's a Hall of Famer here at the Rose Bowl. But, but, Brett, you don't get a walkthrough. You know, you, you, you go from sitting in the athletic director's office to coming down here and all of a sudden walking through some situations in your mind, and then all of a sudden you're out here and you've got to be able to react quickly and call the timeouts at the right time and balance things out. By using that timeout, you've got to put the ball up into the end zone now. Three receivers to the left. Abraderis goes to the right. Monte ball. They motion Doe and they'll send him back out to the left. They roll the protection in that side. Fire caught. Touchdown. That was caught by Jordan Frederick, redshirt freshman from Madison's Memorial High School. Love. Phillips rallies this team. He did a great job. What's the one thing you can't take there, Brent, on third down without a timeout? A sack. This way they take the pressure off of the offensive line and Phillips against the team that leads the nation in sacks with 56. They roll him away from it, put the ball low and away so Frederick can make a play on it. They get the touchdown. There's the young man in Madison. Russell, freshman in as a kicker, makes it a three-point game again. 
I know we got a Rose Bowl. Oh, here. we got a ball game coming up. You know, a lot of people uh, weren't too excited about a five-loss Badger team here, but as I pointed Let's out, go, three of those five losses in overtime. The other two by three points. Let's go down to Tom Rinaldi with Coach Alvarez. Barry, welcome back to the Rose Bowl. Two possessions for Stanford. You're down two touchdowns. What was the turning point to get back in this well, game? Our kids never left, lost confidence. Uh, they're fighters. Uh, we were able to get some, some momentum, started running the ball. Uh, I, I, we have good communication, and uh, uh, I think our guys got, you know, our, our guys, there's a lot of, there was just a lot of game left, so we were fine. Good luck and enjoy the second half. Thank I appreciate it. Let's go over to Heather. Tom, thanks so much. Coach, after a quick start, what's your assessment of Kevin Hogan and your offense as this, as this game's progressed? You know, we've done well, but uh, tiny errors are getting us. You know, we missed a couple of throws high. Uh, we missed a couple of blocks on third down, which is inexcusable for us. We have to execute if we want to have a chance to win. We'll let you get to the locker room. Thanks, Coach. Brent, back to you. Thanks, Heather. Halftime at the 99th Rose Bowl. Stanford 17, Wisconsin 14. Stay tuned now for the Buick Halftime Show. Brent Musburger with Kirk Herbstreit welcoming you back to the second half of the 99th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. And uh, to start the second half, the Badgers will have the ball, and I agree with Coach Corso. Steady diet at 28 coming your way. Well, I think they've settled in. I, mean, I, I think Barry Alvarez and Matt Canada deserve a lot of credit. You even mentioned down by 14. They didn't panic. They didn't throw away their the playbook and say, hey, let's start over. Barry Alvarez says, hey, We've been Wisconsin for a long time, even down 14. Long way to go. He mentioned that walking off the field. And uh, you know, I, I think that you're going to see more of the same here in the second half. It's going to come down to that final possession by either team. Lights are on. Sun setting. Take it down in the end zone by Melvin Gordon. He'll take a knee and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Let's check in now with Tom Rinaldi, Tom. Well, coming into this game, Barry Alvarez, Brent, said he fully expected to use two quarterbacks, Kurt Phillip and Joel Stavi, in this football game. We've only seen Stavi throw one pass, a deep ball to Aberderis, which was dropped in the end zone. It fits a situational approach. Alvarez said he'll use Stavi for those throws which best suit his arm strength. That was the play in the first half in which he used it. Would have been a touchdown if Albert Harris was able to haul it in. We'll see how he manages the two quarterbacks here in the second half, Brent. All right, Tom, and uh, Phillips will open up under center. Monte Ball, his running back. A couple of the big tight ends move over to the right. Now he has three in total, and they'll run ball on first down. And nothing doing on first and ten as we go down to Heather Cox. Brett, we talked all week with David Shaw. Every time he said his biggest concern was containing Monte Ball. Well, that hasn't changed. Coming out of the locker room, he said he told his defense that the first guy to him must bring him down. They've got to get into the backfield, stop him at the line of scrimmage. He said our goal in the second half, no yards after contact. And Kark, as you said, Shaw also said we prepared all month with the expectation that this game will come down to the fourth quarter. We're ready for it. Second down and 10. Phillips on quick drop to the pass is deflected, incomplete, and it will be third and ten. And guess who? Ben Gardner. What a game the young man from Wisconsin is having. He, he said he grew up a huge Ron Dane fan, always dreamed of playing for the Badgers, didn't have a scholarship offer not only from Wisconsin, but really from anybody else. He was looking at Northern Iowa when, lo and behold, ball guys, Jack Harbaugh, got an opportunity to see him play and called out to Jim Harbaugh and said, you got to look at this kid, Ben Gardner, from out here in Wisconsin. They gave him a full scholarship to go out and play at Stanford, and he's had a heck of a career. White's in the backfield. He helps out on pass protection, and he drops the ball. He was slipping out on a screen pass. It's the second time we've seen a third down screen, which is not a shock from a, a very average passing team. I mean, it's, and it's set up pretty well here. Phillips does just the right thing here. He looks right, buys enough time, puts it right where, where, where White can make a play on it. I think White just got so excited to get downfield, he didn't secure the football first. Terrell lets it bounce, and it takes a badger bounce. But Wisconsin unable to take advantage of the first possession of the second half here. And now it will be Stanford's turn when you come back, leading by three in the 99th Rose Bowl game. 
Kevin Hogan. Taylor behind the left side. That was read beautifully. And coming up is Southward. He's a junior from Sunrise, Florida. Made a fine stop that time for the Badgers. You know, right now you look at what Taylor's done in this game. They've been able to bottle him up for the most part. 11 carries, only 46 yards. And again, I, I keep watching here on first and 10. As soon as the ball is snapped and those linebackers see the guard pulling around, they are immediately coming downhill along with both the safeties, Southward and Johnson, setting up. Again, I'm surprised Pep Hamilton's not trying to challenge him with the play action pass more. Ertz is flexed off the line. Hogan looks in his direction. Now he's under duress. Gets it off to save the sack. And Taylor dashes back and still going. A lot of activity for about a one-yard gain. Hogan has gotten so much credit for keeping plays alive that... You know, this remember he's a freshman sometimes it's okay to throw it away or just take off and get as many yards as you can he, you know here he catches a break by Taylor making something out of this and it's a big razzle dazzle we're all excited but he's very fortunate that that wasn't more of a seven or eight yard loss because he's trying to always make a play which you appreciate but at some point you got to be willing to understand when to throw that football away need six on this third down And we still don't have a first down here in the second half. Southward again making a play. We, we've got to give Chris Ash and Charlie Partridge a lot of credit for this plan that they've been able to put together. You know, Stanford scored 14 points early, but they've made some adjustments, and the adjustments are pressure. I think they've settled in. They're starting to understand this scheme a little bit better, and quite honestly, I don't think Stanford's very aggressive right now with their play calling, making it a little easier for Wisconsin, Wisconsin to stop the Stanford offense. He's a Klinsky. Abraderis awaits for Wisconsin at the 33-yard line, and that's where the Badgers will have it. So defenses on both sides of the ball now have taken charge of this football game. We can't even get a, a first down here. The... Monte Ball in behind what? And he's across the 30-yard line. David Shaw in two years has done a fabulous job replacing Jim Harbaugh at Stanford. There's Monte Ball. He down at about the 34-yard line of the third down coming up. You know, I asked Coach Shaw, you know, what, what, what do we have, about seven NFL coaches lose their jobs yesterday? So I said, your phone's going to start ringing. He said, nope, that's why my contract was extended by Stanford. Right. No distractions this week. Not going to be calling because i got to tell you right now, if I owned an NFL team, one of the college coaches that I would interview is right there. Coach Shaw, I spent nine years in the NFL as an assistant coach. Runs a powered game. Don't chase him away. No, he, he's the NFL. He Let him, we want to keep he's him not right going place. Believe me, he is very happy. Third down now, and Phillips fires complete. Got the first down out to the 45 yard line, and he finds Abraderis. There's Abraderis on the backside, one on one. An opportunity to go up against a freshman, Alex Carter, who's had a really good year. Very physical. He sells it to the outside, comes back in on the quick, the quick slant. Once he got the leverage with his body to the inside, it made it very easy for Kurt Phillips to make that throw. That's something that Stanford has got to be aware of. When Abraderis gets from the backside by himself and he gets one on one, he's typically going to win that matchup. Now the Jets sweep with Gordon. Coming around right, got a great block. Across midfield, and Terrence Brown makes a stop. But at the point of attack, he finally got that block on the seal man. They've been uh, they've having a hard time getting to the outside. So Pedersen actually kicks him to the outside. And then he allows the, Gordon to cut underneath it. So instead of sealing it, he just pushes Richards outside. And that gives Gordon enough room there to be able to accelerate upfield. You give him just a little bit of room. And we've seen all year what Gordon can do for this offense. Second down and two. White stays in. Gordon in motion and hit in the backfield, anticipating the snap. Was that was Morrow? It was almost like he jumped across too early, but he just read it perfectly. Watch Morrow get off 
his stance. Boy, he, you know, he and Henry Anderson just do such a good job of being able to get inside in between these mm. gaps. I mean, he just, you're right, he probably guessed there a little bit. That was great anticipation. And I'll tell you, between he and Anderson, both 6'6", six, six, about 280 pounds, really good quickness. They've been disrupting that left side all game. Five-yard loss. Monte Ball checks in as a running back. Phillips steps away to the left, tries to get the first down, and will not get the first down. Could not get to the marker, and hanging on was freshman Alex Carter from Ashburn, Virginia. Briarwoods High School going to be an outstanding defensive back. That young man right there, number 25. What an effort there by Kirk Phillips just to try to come up with that first down. Barry's going to send the punt team out here. I'm sure that, you know, for just a second he flashed, but he knows what kind of game this is. This is a ball control, defensive struggle, play field position, sure. unless he's got a fake on. Here we go. Coming through with the punt. Hangs it high. And it will bounce out at about the 15-yard line. So Barry says, let's play this field position game. First down and 10. Hogan's back. Hewitt and Taylor alongside. Going to throw the swing to Taylor. And Taylor is out to the 18-yard line on that first down pass with Armstrong making the stop on our last play of the third quarter. Time for Badger fans to jump around. Kirk, there is our director, Derek Mobley's favorite shot every year of the Rose Bowl. The sun setting off to the west here in Pasadena now. And there are the members, newest members of the Hall of Fame. The guy you're very familiar with, John Cooper from Ohio State. One of the great linemen of all time, Ron Yeri from USC. And Brian Greasy, who is the radio analyst for ESPN today. He and his dad, Bob, are both in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame. How about John Cooper's the only coach to win with a Pac-12 team. They were the Pac-10 then, Arizona State, and then later with a Big Ten team, Ohio State. So Hogan keeps it and takes off. Good run to the 32-yard line. Uh, his mobility is always a factor. Here's the view from our DirecTV Ultimate Picture Cam. A little play action here. And when he gets out on the edge, there's nobody open out there. Young was covered. The two receivers downfield are covered. And Hogan does what he does. And that's make something out of nothing. Able to use his athletic ability and maneuver his way through that Wisconsin defense and pick up a first down. And not only is that a first down, but when you have a quarterback that starts getting to the outside like that, that allows you to get back to your bed and bread and butter, which is Stephon Taylor. Taylor breaks a tackle. Good second effort run by the tailback. Close to a first down. Pro Marty makes the stop. Yeah, these first two drives, I mean, it looked like Stanford was going to score a lot of points, 14 points. But in the last eight drives, look at this. David Shaw trying to figure things out. As I said, I think it's a combination of Wisconsin getting more confident, getting more aggressive on defense with their linebackers and safeties against the run, containing uh, Kevin Hogan when he is thrown. And I think now we're going to find out who really wants to win this game more because both these offenses have been struggling quite a bit. Hewitt, the lead block. And that time the defense won, but Taylor picked up the first down. And uh, that's the first snap in Wisconsin territory since about midway through the first quarter by this team. Yeah, it, it, it's been, uh, I think, a bit of a surprise for Kevin Hogan. Like, you, you and I have seen him in these last four games. and always seems that... Stanford is dictating things to the defense that they're going up against and that's not been the case after after those first two drives This is where they like to throw the ball to the tight ends once they empty the set And they emptied it by sending Taylor out They look back underneath and they did hit Ertz. Good call Herbie That's for a first down. Well, no, they're gonna mark it a little bit short now 
And yeah, they spread them out because they want to try to get Twilolo up against Borland or Ertz up against Taylor. This time he can choose either side. He goes towards Ertz, who finds a nice little hole there between the safety or the corner that time, Smith, and also the linebacker. See the linebacker's eyes? He looked back into the quarterback. Ertz is able to get away from him. Nice, easy throw. And you see Hogan there back in rhythm. Young and keeping it, Hogan breaks free across the 30-yard line for a big first down. They have Kelsey Young in the backfield, and this is a nice read by Kevin Hogan. Kelsey Young's going to grab the attention of David Gilbert, and when Gilbert took Young away, nice job by Hogan pulling it away from his running back. This is something they've not shown the entire game. A little zone read. Good job. You can see the lineman getting up to Mike Taylor, the linebacker, and a nice wrinkle that time by Pep Hamilton here late in this game. Something they haven't shown the whole ball game. Now another of the talented freshmen, Kyle Murphy, is into that offensive line. They look like a jumbo set, and they run Taylor behind it, and now they're starting to wear down the front. Down to the 20-yard line on that first down, and they are substituting tackles and guards now on the Stanford side and muscling. And they're also doing a good job of being more aggressive with the play calling. We've seen them go to empty. We've seen them try to mix up their first their, their formations and personnel groupings. Been more aggressive. They're getting in and out of the huddle a little bit more aggressively. I think they sense that this is a crucial opportunity and a big drive here for both of these teams late in the fourth quarter. Where they come again. And they are short of the first down. It's going to be third down. Missed eight straight third downs, but have a much better chance here on third down and one. Wilkes is back in as one of the offensive linemen. They continue to substitute in that front. They've got third down and a yard. Wilkerson is going to be your running back. Toss play to Wilkerson to daylight. First down and out of bounds. At the 12-yard line, Johnson gets him out of bounds. Great call here by Pep Hamilton, David Shaw, Wisconsin pinching, anticipating the inside run game. And whether it was a bootleg naked or just get it to the outside, like a quick pitch there to Wilkerson, something to the edge was a gutsy call in the right call that time on third down and short for Stanford. Stephon Taylor back in the lineup for the Cardinal. Wood is the fullback. Taylor, and he is hit in that backfield. Fine defensive play by Pat Muldoon, the redshirt junior from Mason, Ohio, St. Xavier High School. Yeah, that's a powerhouse program, one of the best in the country. Steve Speck does a really good job there at St. X, but well, this is a nice job of him just slipping off of his, of his block and being able to get into the backfield. They've talked all week to us about one of the ways to slow down Taylor is obviously getting penetration and getting upfield Muldoon able to do that there on first down and on second down Hewitt checks back in as the fullback he's also an outstanding receiver he's a lead blocker this time and Taylor still going Taylor with his best running of the day in this drive is across the five yard line but he seems to be finding his own rhythm we're talking a lot about kevin hogan but this power running game you need a guy who can get through some tackles wisconsin knows it's coming still cannot be able to make the play that time desmond southward came in clean had a chance to keep him to a short game but he's able to pick up some tough yards there to give him a chance here on third down this is where Ertz and toilolo are very effective this is the 11th play of this drive Hewitt is off to the left. They're going to bring him in motion. Roll the pocket to the right. Fire high, too high. Toy Lolo, even at 6'6", could not get up in the air. Herbie to grab it. Yeah, they, they've done this all year where they love to get the tight ends isolated and put him one-on-one. -on -one. Toy Lolo at 6'8", again, Ertz at 6'6". He's just got to make the right read and 
Tololo just a little bit too high, tries to extend himself. And you like what Hogan's thinking. I got a guy at 6'8". Let's put it up in the air high where he's got a chance to make the play. But that's a huge stop by Wisconsin with 426 to go in this game. Now it's Jordan Williamson, 22-yard attempt. Zaklinski, the punter, will put it down. Perfect. It's a six-point lead. And twice the Badgers have held Stanford to field goals. Wonderful scene here in Pasadena. And this crowd got its money's worth as we send along a happy new year. It's already 2013. The Badgers down by six in front of 93,359. White and now Gordon is back to return this kickoff also. So a couple of the speedier Badgers are back on this. And this is Gordon. And White's going to have him just let it go out of bounds. Phillips, the Badger quarterback. Jet sweep, Gordon. Cuts, breaks a tackle, 30. And he is out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. A first down run on their first down play. Great call here by Matt Canada. We've not seen Monte Ball very effective here in this second half. In fact, only 11 yards rushing in the second half. I love the fact that they go to the perimeter run game with a jet sweep. Not only does it pick up the first down, something to just try to keep in mind for this Stanford defense, especially the linebackers and defensive backs. Now they bring back in Monte Ball, the hammer. And he twists his way to the 39-yard line on that first down run. And David Perry, the nose man, with another stop. Can't help but think about Kurt Phillips and what he did to just be out on this field. Three reconstructed surgeries to his right knee. It's been talked a lot about the hours that he put in rehab to try to come back and only to get hurt again and come back and get hurt. And here he is with a chance to try to drive his team to a victory. White checks in. Gordon on the sweep the other way. And Gordon close to a first down to the 45-yard line. So here comes up third and short with 318 left on the clock. Badgers trail it by six. Barry Alvarez has to consider four down territory right now. And if he gets stuffed by this defense in front of Stanford, he's got to at least think about it after that last drive by the Cardinal. Straight ahead. Ball. And I believe he got the first down. I think he'll get the spot. And let me check that. That was James White who had checked in from the sideline that time. And I believe he got it. Stanford on these short yardage situations doing a really good job of jumping the snap count and anticipating the run and shooting the gaps. Wisconsin fortunate that time to be able to pick up that first down. Now they get back to first and ten. You're under three minutes. You got two timeouts. Back in a shotgun. They're going to have to make something happen eventually in the passing game. Roll the pocket to the left. Phillips with an underneath completion to midfield. So they pick up four plus yards on that. And Kenzel Doe. He's a sophomore from Reedsville, North Carolina. Makes that catch for the Badgers, and now second down at midfield. Clock winds down close to two minutes now. Aberderis at the bottom, one-on-one -on -one with the freshman. Phillips fires middle, intercepted. Picked off at the 41-yard line by Uswa Amanam, who has made a couple of big plays in this. Remember way back in the first half? When they missed an interception, well, they didn't miss this time with Manum, and that's the first turnover of this very well-played Rose Bowl game. Brent, it's a great interception by a Manum, but let's also give credit to the defensive line. Josh Morrow in the middle gets his hands up right there and knocks that ball away. The deflection at the line of scrimmage by Morrow sent the ball actually away from Pedersen into the waiting arms of a Manum, and he comes up with a big interception. The ball is bounced sometimes in favor of Wisconsin off the, the, the tip ball. 
And this time, of course, it falls in favor of the Cardinal. Now the Badgers will have to think about using their timeouts as they attempt to stop the Cardinal in an effort to get the ball back. Taylor, who ran so very well on that last drive, takes it now to the 45-yard line on that first down run. Now we're inside of two minutes. And they've got to stop the clock and not let so many seconds no. run away here if they're going to stop this drive. They've got to stop the clock. They're just coming down hoping that they're going to give them this first down and the first play, and it basically comes down to whether or not Stanford can get a first down. You have two timeouts left. Letting it go, letting it go here means that Barry Alvarez is waiting for second, and if they can get the third down, to use their timeouts. Bringing the play clock down. Hogan milks it. Hands off, and now Taylor breaks free for a first down. Clock stops briefly. I see if they got the spot. I may have. Uh, I think it's short. Now you got to use short. Now you use your second timeout, which they do. It's been tough sledding for both teams. One field goal here. The second half of this ball game. Third down. Now Hogan. Taylor's behind Hewitt. Taylor for the first down easily across the 45 yard line. And Coach Shaw and the Cardinal are headed for a Rose Bowl trial. We'll be right back with the Ford BCS postgame show and Rose Bowl trophy ceremony. Don't forget that that's coming up next. A remarkable, remarkable job by David Shaw and the Stanford Cardinal in a year where they lost not, on, not only Andrew Luck, but their top three receivers. Nobody thought they'd ever get to Pasadena, let alone secure a victory for David Shaw. Three straight BCS Bowl games for this program. Remarkable. Did not come easy today. They were in a dogfight with the Badgers. And the Wisconsin just could not move the football effectively against this Stanford defense. And in the end, they committed the big turnover, the game's first turnover. And hugs all around as Stanford pours onto the field. David Shaw wins his first Rose Bowl as a head coach. Barry Alvarez loses his first after three victories. Let's go down now to Heather Cox and the winning coach. All right, we've got Coach Shaw again. Coach, before the game, you told me that you never have real highs and you don't have lows and that sometimes it can be a curse. Are you allowing yourself to be a little bit emotional now? Uh, not yet. I'll get that way in the locker room. I'll get that way in the locker room. But these guys, they deserve this win. We fought hard to the end. And a lot of people didn't give this Wisconsin team credit, but they're a good physical football team. They played extremely well, well coached, and our guys just finished the game at the end. And that certainly showed in the second half when it really became a defensive showdown. Offense came to a standstill. At that point, how did your philosophy and mindset have to change? You know, we just wanted to execute better. We were not going to change our game plan. We wanted to execute better, and, we, and that last drive, we finally did it. We finally blocked the guys we were supposed to block. Stephon hit the ball great. Uh, Wilkerson helped us out a bunch, and our guys played extremely well. And your defense was phenomenal. What was your reaction on that final interception? And I would just, to be honest, relief. <laughs> relief. We talked about it at halftime. We got our hands on five balls in the first half, and it's unlike us to intercept those, not to intercept those balls, and we finally got one. Go have some fun. Celebrate. Now we'll let you go to the trophy presentation. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> All right, Heather. Great job down there. And, uh... Herbie, uh, your final thoughts here on this Rose Bowl. Just uh, people that have not seen Stanford's program, I hope people understand and recognize the program that they have become. Jim Harbaugh started this. People thought they would go away when Jim Harbaugh went to the 49ers. People thought they'd go away when Andrew Luck left to go to the Colts. This program with David Shaw in command with two great coordinators, this program, as he said, is still ascending. They're still growing. And 
becoming a legitimate BCS power program. Three straight BCS bowl games, and I think this win sent a message to America. Well, and they're all getting ready down below to get the trophy. So let's send you to Chris Fowler. Chris. Brent, thank you. Another suspenseful Rose Bowl, folks. And joining me on the stage is Mr. Ben Wong, the president and CEO of Vizio, and Sally Bixby, the 2013 Tournament of Roses president, who will present the Rose Bowl trophy to a soaking wet but very happy Coach David Shaw of Stanford. Sally? So, Coach Shaw, I would like to congratulate you on winning this exciting game. Thank you. David, congratulations. Joined by your family up here. It's been more than four decades since the Stanford team has won that beautiful trophy. What are you most proud about this performance today? And most importantly, I'm proud about how we fight. Our guys fight. We're, it's not always pretty. It's not always perfect. But we never stop. We always keep going. And you know what? We finish when we start. Many people said... This wasn't going to be possible. You lose your, your great quarterback, Andrew Luck, to the NFL. I guess this game today befits the Stanford personality, doesn't it? There's no question. There's no question. We play as a team. We play as a team. Uh, we'll have guys graduate. We'll have guys leave again. But we'll charge them back up and get, get after it this winter. This was a game for the defenses. No first downs in the third quarter. Hanging on to the lead. How much faith did you have in your group at the end holding that six-point lead? We just truly believe since that, that Notre Dame game, we, if we know if we get close at the end, we have a chance to win it. Our guys will pull through. David, 23 and 4 now in, in two years here. What does this say about the, the overall health of the Stanford program? You've been seeking national respect for a while. We still feel like we don't have it, so we're going to come back and charge after again next year. It's good to keep that chip on the shoulder, but I think more people realizing how good a program this is. David, congratulations. The Cardinal champions of the Rose Bowl. Let's so Stanford. A rugged, hard-earned Rose Bowl victory. The third straight decided by a touchdown or less. Congratulations once again to David Shaw and the Cardinal. Right back up to you. Hi, right, Chris. Thank you very much. And congratulations to the Stanford Cardinal, their outstanding coach, David Shaw, and the great players who did such a job today against Wisconsin in a real hard-fought Rose Bowl game here today. They win it by six points. And there's David Shaw's little boy in his arms along with the trophy. And to the winner goes the Gatorade bath. Let's go to Chris Fowler.